Now for the real project. That was hard. Hey guys, welcome back. Wow, I haven't said that in a while. It's been a long time since I actually did my ordinary intro. Today we're going to be making a cane sword, hopefully. I mean, not actually, like, today. We're going to be starting thinking about making a cane sword today. I'm actually be building it for quite a while. But anyway, I want to make this thing beautiful. I'm going to use cedar for the actual rod itself, which is going to be very interesting to work with because it's actually very soft wood. But what I do know is I have two different materials I can use for the blade. Scratch that. I actually have three. One is leaf springs. Another one is this coil spring that I straightened out a while ago that used to be look like this and when I straightened into this we could straighten it out further and shape it into a blade it would be quite easy. And the last one's incredibly boring and that is just a piece of 8670 high carbon steel. Incredibly boring. No one else to use that. Can you see this? That used to be a Swiss Army knife. I found this in one of our barns and it is a fallen apart bear cub. No, is it bear cub? No, Cub Scouts. That's it. Cub Scouts Swiss Army knife. I would have to rebuild the entire thing. Plus making a new scale, but it'd be a really cool restoration video. If you want to see that video, please let, drop me a comment and tell me. So if I use this steel, what is the chance that it's going to be straight after heat treating? It seems incredibly unlikely that you can uncoil something as tight as this spring, turn it into this, and then turn it into a sword and try to heat treat it and make anything resembling straight. But I kind of want to try. One thing I have not figured out in my mental sketch yet is this is, really, is this going to be double edged or single edge? When Alex Steele and Will Stelter made one, they made it with a single edge. I thought that was a little bit interesting because I never actually seen a cane sword with a single edge. I always thought they were supposed to be double edged or at least double ground and sharpened on one side. I kind of like that idea more. From a forging standpoint, it actually is easier to do two bevels because when you do single bevel, things tend to turn into scimitars and they curve backwards or a katana. I'm not good at forging, so going me going from this to a single bevel might not work very well. That's not right. Ah! I had this idea to make it concave. First thing we're gonna do is try to get some straight lines going. I mean, this is straight, but I don't want that section. So we're gonna try to kind of thread the needle into this big knot with a crack in it and this crack over here. If we go straight through here, the grain actually follows decently well. And the bucket on the cyclone is full again, of course. I'm gonna put this bucket of walnut shavings from the lathe on there. We've got plenty of room. So I was just testing it to see how strong it would be with this knot going across here and uh, it broke. So, it's pretty weak because of that. The question is, is it still long enough? If I want to go all the way to the end and then put an end cap on it, that would be interesting. Draw some new lines. And attempt to cut them out accurately, even though it's a little bit difficult to do when your piece looks like it was cut with a chainsaw, which it was. Check out the swirl around that knot. Wow, look at that. We're gonna run it over the joiner now to get things a little bit flattened out. It doesn't need to be yet, just kind of want to. Now that it's flattened off a little bit, we're gonna take the straight edge again and make another cut there. Uh, now for the bottom of the piece, I want something contrasting, very dark. Uh, we do pedal, but it's just, it's red. It's not that interesting, really. Something very interesting and do some, uh, Delrin, that's just plastic, that could be interesting. I could also use a piece of walnut. It's already turned down. I'm thinking Delrin or walnut. So something we have to really think about is the order of operations in doing this, in splitting it and turning it. Splitting has to happen before turning for it to be round. That has to happen first. I can't make it round until it's glued up, and to be glued up, I have to cut out the slot for the blade, if I cut the slot for the blade, I don't have anywhere to put my live centers because I do not have a four jaw chuck. Therefore, I have to somehow figure out a way to put a live center on a hole. This is too hard for me. Let's just get out now.
Okay, so it's the next day, and I glued this thing out yesterday because it, um, well, because I was done, but I actually broke the side piece off, which I wasn't really too mad about because the glue will be stronger than the joint was, and it, it makes sense the way the grain is. I'm kind of regretting trying to do the dovetail thing. It's okay, but I don't particularly like it. So right now, it is as tall as I want it, really. Done. So that means we can make it a little bit shorter. Cut like half that off, I think. That's actually pretty sticking close. That goes to the end with some kind of metal cap on the end. And that's our grip. And pull it out. So let's start working on the blade, I think, and not work on this anymore because I just, the, this is generic to what the blade I figure out. I just want to get the blade figured out. So it's actually been several days since I put this thing out last time, and that's because lots of things happened that um, stopped me from working on this sword. So now we're going to work on the sword, and it's like a military convoy going around in the background. So, the first thing we're going to work on is actually going to be this, which is a totally different forging project. So I have this, this socket right here, and I have this, and I'm going to make this fit this. And that is going to be part of a lock on the back door that I will show you when I'm done. Very bad lighting, but here's the lock. This has to be released to come out, and then you can slide this over from the outside using this gear, which is a bolt. My handle stripped out, so I'm going to make this socket handle, and we're going to put that on the outside. So you can open the door from the outside, but most people won't know how to do it. It's like a super cool lock. This is not a super cool anvil though. Okay. This is the only pair of round of tongs that I have is not the best for round stock. I bet I can get it straightened out a good bit once I get that back part heated up. So let's uh, get the forward going. The option we have is taking a couple of these blanks and forging out some round bar or square bar, whatever bar you kind of have with these ones. I can't remember precisely how these ones work. They're identical. Down, both down, you flip one. That'd probably be useful for this too. Let's see how fast I can forge these out. Random thing number two. Let me show you how it works on the inside.
And yeah, that works. Now for the real project. Yeah, let's just try to straighten it out. The middle section up. Okay. It's actually been several weeks, months, weeks since I worked on this uh, thing. Can't remember what it is. Cane sword. Yes, it's over here. So that is backwards. This is what it looks like right now. Very, very ugly. I had to stop last time because it was getting late and I was I had to quit. And then I haven't had time to work on it since then several weeks ago. So now we're actually going to light the forge again and we're going to get this thing going. Hopefully make it look more like a blade. And also fill it with the GoPro because my DSLR is not charged because I had a lot of things moving around with batteries. So um, GoPro, it's okay. Broke another one of my bricks. That's fun. Just keep it on. Okay. Something happened. Um, that's some very nasty grain in there. I've made knives out of this steel before and never had problems. Apparently the amount of stress of making a sword is a little bit too much for it. I think I might try heat treating this end and stress testing it to see how quickly it'll break. And if it doesn't firm too horribly, I may still make a little uh, like dagger short sword type thing out of this because it's kind of cool looking. I like how it was going. Obviously this isn't going to work for this chain sword, but something maybe will come out of it good. We're gonna quench it in water just to get maximum brittleness and see how long it lasts trying to break it. So I clamped this piece in the vise to check how strong it is and I broke it just clamping it. That uh, is probably partially my fault. I didn't do any normalizing cycles and I also quenched with water. So I gave it worst case, there it went again. I gave it worst case scenario and it's not very strong that way. So even best case, are you gonna make a decent knife out of that? I don't know. Well, that, uh, well, that other thing is cooling off, whatever it's going to be, if it's going to be anything, if it doesn't break, I'm going to figure out what I'm going to use for the actual cane sword now, which I still want to do because I made this beautiful blank for it with this beautiful cedar wood and this beautiful walnut and this beautiful dovetail, so we're going to figure out what that's going to be. So, go look at steel supply. What I liked about this spring, I got another one actually, this one's bigger, this could work better. This is about the same diameter. I think it's because it was so small and I uncoiled it. That's why it broke, because it was just too much stress and I probably didn't do it hot enough. Definitely not doing that. We have this, boring. We also have the leaf springs. This leaf spring might be the easiest thing to do. Spring made in Mexico, that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna grind through this, let me cut it. Oh, nasty. Oh, is this bolted on? Yep, I riveted on. Safety first. Okay, we're going to do some light testing and uh, see how this performs. I'm not going to do anything else today for the actual cane, so I don't think. I'll test it at the end. Let's go to the very end. Let's hit it with a hammer. Hey, this one didn't break when I clamped it, which is improvement. Okay, if it just snaps off with one light tap, we'll know it's not strong. Okay, so it's um, bending, which is improvement. Overall, flexibility is nice. Doesn't seem to be bending. 
That's pretty cool. It's very flexible, but it's not actually bending. Maybe this video will just be this thing and we'll do the cane sword the next one, because this is kind of cool, actually.